Peacock here. It's 44 Magnum time on the range. Got my old Marlin 44 and a little tease with the 44 uh, Magnum 3 inch Smith there in the holster. Uh, nice combination. I could be transported back into the woolly west, couldn't I? And I'd have a nice rifle and handgun in the same caliber. Of course, I don't know if I could find 44 Magnum cartridges in the average general store in Dodge City, so I might have to go with 45 Colt, right? Which I could do. But uh, this is a 44 Magnum Marlin, 1894 uh, remake of the old uh, 1894 Marlin. You know, this, uh, this is very similar to the guns they made in 1800s and the 1890s. It is octagonal barrel. You can get a look at that. It, uh, it's called the Cowboy Limited, the 1894 Cowboy Limited. I love octagonal barrels on uh, these old lever guns, uh, on any gun almost. And you notice I have a uh, ghost ring sight. I've mentioned those before in my videos. That happens to be the Skinner sight. XS makes a nice one as well. I like the Skinner because it, uh, I don't know, just the contour of it, it follows the lines of the old Marlin a little bit better. And uh, great, a great sight. I have a Cabela's pad on it. Actually, I don't put those on for the padded value as much as just to get the extra length. I have a long length of pull, as you can tell at my height. So I'm always sticking things like that on my rifles just so they feel they fit me better. Uh, not so much to uh, pad the recoil, although that's an added benefit. 44 Magnum. I've not worked the lever. Uh, I just took a shot before I turned on the camera. And in the interest of time, I have the magazine loaded. I have an empty uh, brass in the chamber, and I have uh, 10 rounds in the magazine. So uh, when I fire this, it'll be ready to go. So I won't have quite as much reloading on the, on the camera. Since you know me, I don't do much editing in my videos, virtually none. Uh, this is a gun I've not shown, I think, uh, of, in my lever gun videos or anything, as I recall. I have this in a 45 Colt, which I, I really like. And I like this one. This is a handy size. It's a 20 inch barrel. If you just notice that, it's just a, just a handy little gun. You know, it's just, just really, uh, if I were a deer hunter, this would be one of the guns I'd climb into the tree with. And it's just a handy, handy little rifle. I love lever guns. Uh, they're really, really fun to shoot. And, uh, and easy to shoot pretty well, I think. Particularly if you've got sights you like on it. And my old eyes have a little trouble with the old classic buckhorn sights and that sort of thing. So I usually take those off, put a ghost ring on. And you can't do that in a cowboy match, unfortunately, but uh, but I sure surely can on my range or anywhere else. Or if somebody wants to hunt with it, it's not a, not a problem. So that's 44, and uh, I'm going to take a few shots with it here just to warm it up. I have some 240 grain bullets in it. All right, and before I fire those, let me uh, add another note. That's pretty much a standard round in 44 mag. You know, the, the, old, the classic bullet is 240 grains. In the rifle, I tend to, to buy the uh, flat nose, round nose, flat point bullets. It gets you a closer look at that because they cycle easier. The classic semi wad cutter, the Keith bullets that have sharper edges uh, don't cycle sometimes as smoothly in a lever gun. So uh, I usually buy those. You, they're easy to get. I get them from Lasercast. They're very simple to find because of all the cowboy shooters out there shooting lever guns like this. And uh, one note about that, I've been shooting 44 Magnum since 1974 by the thousands. And I'd always thought I ought to get a rifle. Uh, it'd be kind of nice, you know, since I load so much and always have a bucket full of uh, 44 Magnum rounds around. But I really didn't get around to that before a couple of years ago. Well, unfortunately, I had a, a surprise, and the rounds that I had been firing and loading, uh, the 240 grain cast bullets that everybody loads for the last 30 years, and having lots of success with, very accurate in any 44 revolver that I've ever shot them in, or 44 special. Well, in this gun, they were keyholing, they were tumbling, even at 20 yards. I put up some paper just to get my sights adjusted and ready to go. Well, on the paper at 20 yards, they were tumbling. They were going in sideways. These are the bullets that I'd had so much, I mean, this just did fine in all my revolvers. 
So I had to go back to the drawing board and those buckets of bullets I had loaded for my revolvers just weren't going to work. So I had to make sure I was getting a bigger cast bullet. Yeah. This rifle wants uh, 431 diameter bullets. You know, in the past, I've been, you can generally buy, I don't want to get too technical, but when you buy 44 Magnum uh, or special cast bullets, they're usually in 429, 430, 431. You can probably get them in 432. I don't know, diameter. Uh, which also, uh, to get even more technical, you realize that a 44 Magnum is really not a 44 caliber gun. You know, it's actually a 43. You know, because you're talking 429, 430, that's 43 caliber. But uh, it needed a bigger bullet. It needed a 431, you know, thousands uh, in order to, uh, to function and be accurate. And I also discovered I needed to change powder for this. So I'm using 2400 powder and there's some others that would work as well, I'm sure. So once I got some uh, the laser cast 431 diameter bullets, I changed to 2400 powder. Uh, shoots great. All right. So that's just kind of a note for you folks that uh, have shot a lot of 44. Maybe you uh, have the same thing uh, maybe in mind. Uh, just be aware that if you get a Marlin rifle, it might have a slightly bigger bore than the handguns you're used to firing. All right. So once I got that worked out, it's not a problem now. Okay. So that said, let's take a few shots. Now I'm going to shoot some of the standard 240 grain bullets. Then I also load a bunch of uh, 300 grain bullets. These are uh, laser cast. They weigh 300 grains. That's a heavy bullet. All right. So I said, why not? It's a rifle. I don't like to shoot those much in a pistol. They're not a lot of fun. They have a nice little kick to them. But in the rifle, you know, it doesn't really matter. So first I'm going to shoot the, the lighter bullets, the, if 240 grains is light. I'm going to shoot here close by uh, a few of these, and then I'll shoot the others a little bit further away. I don't think I get too much uh, change in sight picture that I'll miss everything. Uh, I don't really like to shoot these targets close here with a 44 Magnum too much. I just had to put $100 worth of welding on my swinging plate thing here. So I think it's pretty strong, but I'll, I'll take a few shots at it with, uh, with these uh, 44 Magnums that are pretty warm, and I think it'll be all right. All right, let's back up a little bit here. I know you like to see it up close. There goes that empty case I was telling you about. <laughs> you know, you notice that swings them, doesn't it? A little bit more than the nine millimeter. <laughs> oh. yeah. Thought I had one more, maybe not. Okay, uh, yeah, that's 10. So those were 240 grain bullets and uh, simple to shoot. You know, when I'm shooting those swinging plates with a pistol, uh, there's not much of a margin of error. If you've never shot an eight inch plate, by the way, with a handgun, uh, I know that doesn't look that far away and it's not, it's 20 yards, 21, 22, whatever. Uh, next time you're at the range, set your, your target stand at 20, 22, three yards and put some eight inch stickers on it or just draw, put an eight inch pie plate on it, whatever. Pull out your Glock or your handgun and bam, 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 try to hit it pretty fast. It's a very small target. There's one of the advantages of having it on paper. You can see where you're missing. The other thing about plates, or eight inch plates, any plate for that matter, when you miss it, you don't necessarily know where your bullet went. You don't know whether you shot high, low, left, right, necessarily. And so it, it adds to the challenge even further. But uh, an eight inch plate can be a real aggravation, believe me. And those of you who have shot them a lot, you know what I'm talking about. But the point I was gonna make is, with this rifle, I mean, you can miss one, of course, but it's just like, you know, shooting a barrel, you know, 55 gallon drum. It's just with, with good sights, it's just a lot of fun. All right, let's uh, load up some of these big boys now. 300 grain, bear loads. I say bear loads, but uh, they're not exactly ear splitters, but they're pretty warm. They ought to knock over anything I hit with them, let's put it that way. They might not. As I've said before, the excuses I've made before, sometimes those steel targets, uh, they get set a little harder than other times. If there's something under the, the pedestal, uh, some dirt, 
just whatever it might be. They just don't want to fall. And, and they are very heavy. They're very heavy. Well, let's try a few of them here. I think I can take about the same sight picture with these heavy ones. I'm not sure. So, let's see. Okay, they're all going to roll over. Three with one shot, not bad. Click. Yeah. All right. Pretty warm. So those are some pretty heavy hitting, uh, hitting rounds. I don't like to shoot uh, too many of those. Though they'll actually beat up normal steel. A lot of the steel out here is armor plate, but uh, most of the animals are just standard. We call it soft steel, if steel can be soft. And uh, if you look at those things, you can see little craters, small craters, uh, even with lead bullets, cast bullets, where you hit them when you shoot them with, with hot stuff like that. But let's try a couple more of those. Okay. Remember now, we're throwing out 300 grains of lead, and they're hitting pretty hard. Oh, let's go up. I think it's, uh, I don't know if you can see those black ones or not. I'm going to go for a chicken. We'll see if I can hit one. Probably can't. Yeah, not, where, not sure where to hold on the chicken. With the 300 grain bullets, I think, I, I think it goes just a little bit higher than the, uh, the 240 grain bullets, but I'm not, not sure. And it's not just the weight of your lead, for those of you who are, are interested in, in hand loading and, and that kind of thing, and the, the, the ballistics and the, the physics of it, sometimes you can actually shoot a lighter bullet and it will go lower, depending on the charge, where it might go higher if it has a light charge. Uh, so uh, one thing that affects the, uh, the point of impact, even in a rifle, especially a handgun, is when you're firing, how long that bullet's in the barrel makes a difference. You should think about it, you're shooting a hard kicking handgun and the actual recoil of, of the gun throws the bullet up slightly. You know, before that bullet leaves the, the muzzle, the recoil of the gun is actually affecting where that bullet's gonna hit. That makes sense? That's why sometimes you can shoot a uh, hotter round and it will actually print lower, okay? It'll print lower because it's out the barrel before the recoil affects it as much, you know? So, so it's a strange dynamic, depending. It's not as much with a rifle, but it is. But anyway, that's, that's, that's a neat gun, a fun gun. I mean, can you, you know, uh, those sights put you right on the target. If you have never, I know I'm uh, always proselytizing uh, revolvers and uh, lever guns, even as much as I enjoy the Glocks and the, the newer guns and AR-15s, but if you've never tried a lever gun, with a sight that, that works for you. Now, if you've got young eyes and, or you've got clear eyes, not so much age, my left eye is really clear. Uh, that's one reason I shoot with my left eye with a pistol, even though that's my dominant eye. Uh, I shot for whatever, 40 years or 45 with my, uh, my right eye in a pistol, even though that's not my dominant eye and did just fine. But I switched over because my left eye is clearer. It's more correctable, you know. I think it's 2020, or it's, it's very clear. Or I've got a little bit of astigmatism, so I get a blurred sight picture slightly with my right eye. And uh, I don't with the, with the rifle, with the ghost ring sights. If you're someone who doesn't have a clear right eye, you don't get a really crystal clear sight picture, ghost ring sight uh, will, will help that a great deal. Uh, if you've ever shot an AR-15 or an M1 Grand or anything like that, and you like those sights, and they take care of that, that's what these do. These Skinner sights or the XS on a, on a lever gun. So, 
you can see uh, a lever gun is is a blast it is a blast 44 magnum for a lot of people makes more sense you know i have this in 45 colt and since i hand load there's virtually no difference you know really and uh, in fact it's easier because uh the same bullets i can use in my revolvers my 45 colts i can use in my uh, marlin i don't have to you know go through that that the uh, change i was talking about earlier how the bore is a little bit bigger on this 44 than it is on my revolver so i don't have that issue to deal with but for a lot of people if you're just picking up your ammo at uh, walmart when you can find it uh, in 44 magnum uh, one of these is a blast now i will say too i don't have that issue with factory ammo if you're buying just jacketed rounds hunting rounds you're picking up a expensive box of of uh, 44 magnum jacketed ammo you know you almost have to take a second mortgage to buy that these days don't you but it, it functions fine in here it shoots shoots great all right so that's kind of a hand loading insider tip i was giving you on that uh, it was a real surprise to me and i just and a lot of you do hand load or you're thinking about getting into it so i just wanted to mention that 44 mag uh, marlin cowboy limited it's it's a blast and you know what there's a bullet left in there and so Let's do something with it. Yeah. Okay. What I tend to do walking around the farm or shooting with my son, I kind of taught him the same thing. It, you can't just stop and unload a lever gun, right? You, and you don't necessarily want to shoot all 10 rounds you have in it, or 13, like the other one holds. It has a longer barrel. So if we're traipsing around the farm and we're just plinking at some targets and that kind of thing, what we do is what I just did, you know, bam bam shoot a couple shots and on that second shot that last shot you shoot just leave the empty in the chamber and then we carry it like that you know and then if you see something else you want to shoot rack out that empty and bang so that empty uh, round in there is kind of your your uh, safety it's our safety these marlins do have a cross bolt safety uh, most old lever guns and some of the others i have do not so i tend not to get in the habit of using it you know i let the hammer let the empty cartridge be my safety I do use it occasionally, but uh, I don't want to get in the habit of depending on, on that safety because I don't have that on most of my lever guns. In fact, I wish it weren't on this one. Okay, so Cowboy Limited 44 mag, one of the most uh, common uh, cartridges, one of the most popular cartridges on the planet, and a really neat leather, lever gun that chambers it and is fun to shoot. So thought you might want to see that handy little gun and uh, see it in action. And I will shoot the three inch 44 here, I'm, uh, I'm playing another video where I do nothing but the three inch 44s. I've got a couple of those and uh, see if I can hit anything with them and show them off a little bit more. All right, so Marlin lever guns, great guns, fun to shoot. Don't have my cameraman with me today, so I couldn't do any zooming. Y'all take care and I'll, uh, I'll see you again soon.